Welcome to DNA control mechanisms. The traits that we have are the result of expression of our DNA. And sometimes this expression um, is necessary or it might be turned off. So different traits might help organisms survive in their environment. Um, so for example, mammals, what makes mammals special? Infant mammals or baby mammals have the ability to break down milk with an enzyme lactase. It's a protein that's made, is expre expressed from our DNA. However, as adults, this gene is turned off. And that's partially why a lot of adult humans, which humans are mammals, are lactose intolerant because uh, that gene that should create that enzyme lactase is turned off. Today we're going to examine how different types of organisms control when and how proteins are generated from a DNA sequence. We're going to start today by looking at prokaryotes. So prokaryotes are bacteria such as E. coli um, and they regulate their DNA differently than eukaryotes. So that would be us, other animals, plants, and fungi. So, in 1961, these two dudes, Francois Jacob and Jacques Manod, I'm sorry if I butchered that last name, they found what was called an operon system, which is essentially like the operator uh, that controlled our gene. So, in order to survive, our, our bodies need amino acids uh, to build proteins. And some amino acids can be consumed by eating things in the environment, kind of like in a Mario video game when you're running around collecting all the gold coins. However, for our body to function properly, we need some very specific gold coins. Sometimes you can't find the gold coins or the amino acids you need, so an organism needs to make them on their own. In this picture, we've got tryptophan, which is an amino acid that our bot that this bacteria needs to make. And so tryptophan is absent, which means there isn't any tryptophan. And so this section of DNA, this operon, this operator, is currently turned on, which means it can make an enzyme that will help make more tryptophan because we want to increase the amount of tryptophan we have because we don't have any right now. So tryptophan is absent, and the operon is turned on because this thing called the repressor is inactive. So here's our repressor and it, if the gene was turned off it would fit right in there. It would block the ability for this DNA to be read as mRNA and then translated into amino acids. But it is currently inactive. This is kind of like if you had a lake below a dam um, and the lake dried up, you needed to refill that lake, so you opened up the dam and let all the water out. Here we've got the opposite. So genes can be turned on and off like a light switch. So after this bacteria has made all the tryptophan it needs, tryptophan is present. We don't need any more. Stop spending energy and money, um, you know, molecular money, trying to make tryptophan. If your body tells you you're full, stop eating. So the same thing happens here. Something called a repressor, so that red thing from the last page, is activated. So tryptophan being there attaches and then attaches to the operon, that segment of DNA, and then no RNA is made. So the gene is no longer expressed. So because proteins do certain jobs in the body, you don't always you don't always need them. You only need them when there's a job to be done. So in this case, lactose or a certain type of sugar is absent. So if there's no sugar, why do you need an enzyme to break it down? So here we've got a repressor that is active that can shut off the enzyme like a light bulb. So no RNA is made because this operon 
and this operator are turned off. However, if lactose is present, so that sugar is there now, um, it's going to induce or tell that repressor, hey, stop, stop holding me back. I need to make some enzyme so I can drink this milk. I need to break down this, this sugar, um, and without, without this enzyme, I won't be able to do it. So it inactivates the repressor, and look. So the re repressor went from this block shape to this curved molecule. It just bent it out of shape. So now it no longer fits into that section. So that allows the gene to be read, RNA to be made, and the protein to be made. It is induced or turned on the switch. Now this type of control mechanism is pretty crazy. There's these things called transposons, which are kind of like, uh, if you watch Dragon Ball Z, um, they can like teleport all over the place. So it's kind of like our DNA being able to teleport um, or transport itself. So transposon genes can actually insert itself into a section of DNA to block transcription so that our body can't go from DNA to RNA. It blocks it. It fills it in with this with this repeated sequence um, on both sides. So on one side it looks like this, and on the other side it's inverted. Crazy. And there's a woman, Barbara McClintock, that discovered this in the 1940s with uh, corn. And she won a Nobel Prize for that. So our buddies and ourselves, eukaryotes, um, they regulate DNA a little differently. So DNA control mechanisms in eukaryotes are different um, because we have nucleus, nucleuses, nuclei, where we've got our DNA stored in chromosomes and chromatin. So chromatin is this mass of genetic material in here. Um, that's not compact very well, but it's then condensed really tightly into chromosomes. So these chromosomes are what hold our DNA. And when it's wound up really tightly, our DNA cannot be transcribed. The, the enzymes can't get to it. Our bodies like to recycle material. Um, so why throw something away when you can use it again? So our body, after the chromatin is unwound, there are several opportunities for our genes um, to be regulated and then also for those parts to be recycled for use later. Um, so you see one regulation is uh, cutting out the introns so that uh, the RNA can move on. Um, a stage of recycling here where you break down the RNA after, bit, after it's been used um, and after a protein's been used, that is also broken down. Remember, eukary eukaryotic cells can also control um, the removal of introns and rearranging exons after, um, after transcription has occurred. So you see there's RNA transcript here. Um, this is what RNA is. And then you use spliceosomes to actually cut out those introns and bring it all back together. So that's one way we can regulate our DNA is through spliceosomes and removal of introns. Another way we have learned about how um, mRNA can be regulated is by how many tails it has. So we know that once it's out in the cytoplasm, so that's that space beyond the nucleus. So there's our nucleus. Here's our cell. This space out here has a lot of digestive enzymes. And the more A's you have on that tail, the safer you will be out in that space. So those A's can be broken off eventually, and the mRNA, mRNA can be broken down, which means the mRNA can no longer be used to make proteins. So lastly, did the protein require a chaperone or uh, a rough endoplasmic reticulum to fold up its shape? 
because if the proteins need these things, then they have to be available to be used. Um, if a chaperone isn't available, the protein may not be formed completely. It would just stay as a polypeptide sequence here. So that's another way we can regulate, um, or our bodies regulate, protein synthesis is by the availability of chaperones. So just a reminder, uh, the rough endoplasmic reticulum, or here, RER, can also be involved in regulating um, where proteins go because they only work with proteins that are leaving the cell. So that's another way we can regulate proteins is by where they go. So just a reminder that the genes are transcribed to help determine what cells will mature into over time. Um, so cells grow up and they have to be and carry out adult functions. So um, certain cells have certain functions and our body needs to regulate these. So we can't produce all proteins at once. We can't have all these different types of cells. Um, our body needs to be able to regulate these things um, so that our bodies function properly.